The following presentation was recorded at the Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, please visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond sponsors for helping make these videos possible. That we just created last year. Uh, the idea is that we actually do quite a bit of open source development, and we work with now, you know, GNOME, Ubuntu, all these upstream projects. But usually, people really don't know that, and like they just think that we get a machine, slap our logo on it, and send it out the door. And that's pretty erroneous because it takes quite a bit of work to make sure that everything just works when you start up a machine. But Another thing that most people don't know is that we've been doing this for 11 years. Yes, I realize that it says lessons from 10 years making machines born around Linux. It's because whenever I originally made this uh, slide deck, uh, that's how long it was. And then I was lazy enough to not just change the 10 to an 11. So instead, I just added, you know, a little bit of information under that. Um, I'll just get right into it. Uh, I'm going to talk briefly about, well, not briefly, most of the time about System 76 is passed and interspersed in there are little lessons that you can apply to your own projects. And then with about 20 minutes left, you can ask me any question you want. Um, if it doesn't have anything to do with System 76, Linux, or open source, I probably won't answer it, but you can try. Uh, but getting into it, this is a picture of our fearless leader, Carl, uh, approximately nine years ago. Uh, this was System76 back then. Uh, it was in his basement, not his garage, you know, like the typical founder. And uh, my favorite, he was actually working on sound on that laptop there and trying to make it work properly. Uh, drivers were much more of a problem then than they are now. And so... Uh, Originally, what Carl did was he, System76 sold any hard, piece of hardware that we could make sure worked with Linux. And that included printers, that we'll get to it here in a second, but it included all sorts of stuff that, thank God, we don't do now. But uh, uh, that was employee number two, down there in his lap. It's dead now. But... Uh, the, I remember uh, him telling me a story about how, you know, he's working out of his basement and he would ship things with DHL, I think. And the DHL guy was really impressed because every time he had just more and more stuff to send with him. Uh, DHL guy's dead now, too. <laughs> when we started, uh, I don't, most of you who have heard of us probably know we ship Ubuntu on our machines. Uh, that almost didn't happen. Uh, we almost shipped a distribution, a well-known distribution called Yoper. Uh, there's a screenshot over on the right. Uh, it was really hard to find Yoper's logo. Uh, and then it looks terrible because that's my GIMP work there, you know, trying to get it. A transparent background, so uh, don't judge. Um, and uh, this was something that uh, if you're working on hardware, this is that little start of the nuggets of wisdom. If you're working on hardware, try to pick a platform that you think has legs. Yo was doing interesting things. I don't know what they were. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, Ubuntu had a company behind it. It looked like it was going to get ongoing support for the foreseeable future. So ultimately, I think we made the right decision in going with Ubuntu over Yoper. This is our website back in the day. It looks really awesome. Um, I love, I, there's so much here and uh, and I love how this part in particular is really entertaining if you just sit here and read it. 
because it says freedom now available. And I asked him why he used this statue with a cone on its head. And he said it looked cool. <laughs> uh, computers to change your world in business, education, and life, and then an ellipses, and then an asterisk. And if you look down, the asterisk uh, says Linux rules. Fortunately, we had free shipping on any order over 800. And I don't really have anything to say about this beyond that. I just find it really interesting. All right. So, the second bit of nugget. Of, if you're working on making laptops more run Linux, you have to engage with this thing called the community, which is, I don't know, it can be rough because it's about 30% full of assholes, and then like the rest of 70% are really good people. Um, but back when we started, um, we were part of this thing called Loco, you know, like there were lots of locos and those were essentially um, Ubuntu user groups and uh, as you can see here we started really getting involved with you know the local Linux user groups and setting up events and helping to spread the uh, information. Now uh, we, we're not as active in like the day-to-day -day planning of like um, Linux user groups in town but we have we try to hold big events to bring all of the Linux and open source enthusiasts together. Also, uh, just right before coming here, uh, we held a mixer for the core boot team. And because they're in Denver uh, for a conference that they organized. And that's really, really important. If you're, if you're going to be working on hardware that Linux or is aimed at, you know, open source enthusiasts, it's important to actually be a part of the community. And uh, I have to say that the core boot guys are really, really, really smart. And uh, I say that not to like put me myself down or to raise them up, but they're just freaking smart dudes. <laughs> and uh, I, I uh, have been dating this girl, and she wanted to. Uh, know what I did, and so I was like, well, I organized this mixer, uh, why don't you come and hang out? And, uh, and, like, ten minutes in, like, listening to all of us talk about core boot and about, you know, porting existing hardware over to using core boot, uh, I just saw her, like, eyes glaze over, and, uh, it took copious amounts of wine for for everything to match up in the room. But uh, all around it was a success. So being involved with the community is important. When a Dell or an HP or you know some giant enterprise with lots and lots of people trying to uh, compete with them, which we do a decent job of, um, you have to wear many hats, and so this is an early picture. And all the pictures are really more for my enjoyment than yours, um, because these people look totally different now. But I love seeing them with like long hair, or you know, forty pounds ago, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, so if you ever talk to us, now we're uh, nearing. We have about twenty people now. Um, but if you talk to us and you get me, you know, you might get me on the phone and then I'm like, hey, this is Ryan. And then you're like, I want to talk to, you know, the community manager. And I'll be like, okay, one moment, you know, put you on hold. And then it's like, hey, this is the community manager. <laughs> uh, we were forced to wear many hats, but that's not really all that different than a lot of folks you'll talk to here, you know, working on new projects or, or even existing projects that have been around for a while. Sometimes it shocks me to talk to somebody who is part of a project that I think is a really large project, and then they're kind of like, it's kind of like, oh yeah, this is really cool, and you you like, you know, are the main developer, and they're like, yeah, yeah, and it's like, okay, yeah, you, we should like come up with some event, you know, and like work to get more people involved, and it's like, 
who, who should I talk to for that? And it's like, oh, me. <laughs> and it's like, okay, awesome. That's, uh, you do all that, huh? Our big breakout was in a really simple move. Uh, we were, uh, well, I don't know this for certain, but I think it's true, and therefore it is true. Uh, the We were the one of the first um, com companies to uh, sell a laptop outrunning window and to change out the key to reflect the operating system that was actually running on the machine, because there's nothing that is more like, I don't know, disgusting than hitting a Windows key when you're using Linux on your machine. Um, I don't know, it always made me feel dirty, as, and I'd have to go shower, and then whatever I was working on would have to wait, and then I would hit the key again, and it's just a, it's just a bad deal. And so, uh, so when we changed that key out, uh, because it began to reflect the identity of the people who were buying our products, we sold way more products, which seems kind of crazy. I say this often, but that key doesn't actually do anything different. <laughs> you know, than it did with the Windows logo. But uh, what we were tapping into was this idea that I'm sure everyone here understands that when you're into open source, when you're into Linux, it's a part of your identity. And uh, what in your computer is more than just your tool. And so when someone walks by, you know, and they, that you want them to know that there's something different going on here, or at least I do. In fact, people at coffee shops have been really unfortunate to like ask me a question because you know I'll be sitting there and I'll be typing. And they'll be like, "Hey, that's different." It's like, "Oh yeah, it is different, isn't it?" Here, why don't you have a seat? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you can do this on here, and you can do that. Have you heard of Linux? We're gonna be here a while. <laughs> Two more coffees, and uh, so yeah. And that's all part of this marketing open source, uh, which is not as bad as we like to think it is. Um, sometimes I I listen to many users be really ap uh, like apologetic about like you know like oh yeah 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 well this is different you can't really do that and you can't really do this and I think that's a that's from a perspective of privilege because we they've had the privilege to not use Windows for a long time. And so you're apologizing for things that I think that most users don't even care about or notice. Like, uh, I sat down in front of a Windows machine because a friend was like, hey, uh, I updated, now it won't boot. And I was like, okay. I was like, you realize I, I don't like touching Windows. It's like, yeah, but you're the most tech savvy friend I have. And so I'm like, all right. And so I found the problem. A, I don't really know. I didn't go into it too much, but I just read, you know, like, hey, this update screws up machines. You should roll back and then wait and update next week or whatever. And so uh, I was like, no problem. This is, this will be simple, you know. Windows is a, is a is the most one the most popular desktop you know operating system on the planet. Like surely they thought through rolling back updates, and that's pretty simple. So I booted into safe mode, and I and they were like, okay, now type this command into the command prompt, and it's the the first part of the command didn't make any sense, but that's okay. Like the first part of the command was, you know, like identifying the update to roll back. So it's like, I don't know, it's like NTSD something, 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 dash, something. It not matter because, like, I only have to, like, that's nothing. That's not that bad. But then the update identifier was like 255 characters of nothing that meant anything. And it was like, it was like caps lowercase, numbers, you know, letters, and I'm sitting there, like, very carefully typing it because I'm in safe mode and I can't, like, copy and paste it from the browser. And I was like, if I screw this up, I'm only going to do this once, and if I screw this up, I'm just done. Like, and, 
Fortunately, I didn't screw it up, but I say all of that to bring us back to marking open source isn't actually that hard. Um, we have, in the same day, we typically have a phone call, you know, an engineer at, like, you know, some Silicon Valley company like Google or Amazon or Tesla that uses our machine asking a question, and then we have, you know, some 75-year-old guy who, you know, either found us, you know, what I consider to be erroneously, but then bought a machine, or the, uh, which is fine, like, uh, the one of them that I got to listen to was, uh, he was 77, and he was saying that this computer is fantastic, it's great, it, you know, I've had it for four years, it hasn't slowed down at all, and, you know, I'm hoping that I can just continue to use this until I die, which was a rather morbid thought, <laughs> but the, but I'm glad that was his sentiment. I kind of was like, I kind of was like, man, like, you know, just to have some more hope that you're going to make it longer. I mean, Dick Van Dyke is 90 and he doesn't look like he's going to die anytime soon. So I'm, anyway, so, uh, as a result, we've, We've really tried to embrace, um, you know, the open source culture. We've tried to convey that in all of our conversations with our customers. It is a little unfortunate that uh, our community has a really bad uh, distrust of any organization that makes money with open source, which is which is really unfortunate. Only because, like, we sit there at work all day and most of the conversations we have are the conversations type of conversations that happen here and like nobody's like oh yeah we're gonna make money off these suckers you know most of us are like like you know like i can't believe they did this in wayland you know or like what the heck is gnome doing with this hot corner and you know, things like that and uh and so um we try to convey that in everything that we do, like who we are, and that we're a part of the community, and uh, it's been working for us. We have a unique culture at System76. Um, that guy whose head we printed multiple times and put on sticks for everyone is our uh, is our operating ma operations manager, and uh, he just he's he's from Scandinavia. And he's just kind of a gruff guy, and so he gives us that look a lot. So we knew, we wanted to be able to give him that look, and that's really that's really it. That's all. And then here's another piece of insight into our culture: if you're not having fun at what you're doing, then you're not doing it right, or you're not doing the right thing. Uh, for those of you who can't read it, um, April says, "Hey, hey, hey, guys." Cass says, hey, hi. April says, did you hear about the space bar? And Cass says, hey. And then April says, the drinks are great. And then Cass says, oh no, <laughs> terrible joke incoming. And then April says, but the atmosphere is terrible. And then Ben chimes in with, I heard they're out of this world. And then April leaves the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Which happens pretty often, actually. Like, not just April leaving chat, but people being like, okay, well, I don't need to be in banter for a while. Here's some more engaging the community. Uh, for as long as System76 has been around, we've tried to reach out to um, tech press, journalists, um, open source um, influencers who are interest, who would be interested in what we're doing. Um, you know, like I said, we've been around for 11 years, and and it seems like every time I come to one of these events now, you know, Dell has been scaling up, putting more time and effort into engaging the community, and um, and people don't like when I bash on Dell a little bit, but I'm kind of like, yeah, that's <laughs> like welcome to the welcome to the club. You got a long way to go, so you're. So you've been like we have here forever. We're the kind of we'll show you around. And even on Reddit, you need to engage the community. When you're working on any open source project or anything touching open source, uh unfortunately 
or fortunately, um, you deal with really smart people all the time, and you have to be willing to engage them and uh, talk to them about technical merit or talk to them about, you know, the world you're doing in detail. Um, fortunately, uh, the perk of that is if you are willing to engage with them on a human level and talk like technical merits and usually our community comes around really well to good solid arguments uh it could be worse you know could be never mind that's probably offensive yeah so <laughs> and then uh we also bring people in uh we have a super fan event uh which I believe one of the super fans is not in this room. Or oh, no, Aaron, were you a super fan? Oh, you're just awesome. I get that confused sometimes. So this is our super fan event. The last time uh, we invited, uh, there's George Castro, Michael Dominic, um, Nerd on the Street, Mo. I don't, I don't know his last name, and I guess I never asked. Uh, and uh Jay Nixon, I think. No. Jay I don't know, he wrote one of the Ubuntu books. Um and we just asked people who are doing really cool stuff to come and hang out with us in our office and we made them dress up in, you know, D and D type clothing and had a had a LARPing session and that was a lot of fun. Mostly the humiliation of making them dress up, but Uh, we keep growing, uh, you know, more people raise their hands every time. That's Leo Laporte using Bjork's Pro. Um, uh, that was really interesting because the community can also be a set of bastards. <laughs> the, cause like he gets his machine and he's in the chat with like his viewers and he's like, okay, I just started up my Ubuntu machine, like looking good. What should I do? And they're like, Reinstall, install Arch on it, install, you know, like, like, you gotta change, like, the desktop environment. You, okay, how do I do that? And they're handing, giving him commands through the commit, like, <laughs> through the chat, and like, and like, someone pinged us and was like, uh, they're, they're trying to get Leo to install Arch. And we were like, no! Like, and so we popped in the chat and we were trying to, we were trying to help him do what he wanted to do and try out this different stuff, but like, like also not like fork his machine like 20 minutes into opening it. <laughs> you know, especially like, okay, like for, for us in this room, but like he was new. I mean, we were making him like the sacrificial lamb, you know, <laughs> and the worst thing is we were doing, like the only reason I have a problem with it is we were doing it live on like, you know, his show, so the, but he's good now. He's good. He's fine. He gets it. He's down. He's cool. He's hip. One thing that we've tried to do lately is highlight when we actually, when we're, when we're working upstream with the community. Um, that's really important. Like I said, try to tie this into nuggets of wisdom that you can take. Um, if you're doing something, but your users or your you know, people would be interesting, interested in your project don't know, then that's really unfortunate because it's not going to drive, you know, contributions or more users. And so we've been really focused on, you know, when we're doing something interesting in the community and making sure that, that everybody's aware. We have a Telegram channel where we share this information as it rolls out if you're a Telegrammer into that telegram. I keep forgetting to remove this slide. <laughs> and I just, I made a note of it the last like two times. We're just going to move on. No, actually we can go back. We can go back. So we're no longer playing the long game with Unity 8. Um, we as many of you might know, we started working on, um, we started working upstream with GNOME. We've worked on our own GNOME theme that we plan on shipping by default on our machines. Of course, you'll be able to 
easily change that to uh, to uh, the name of that thing that comes by default. It's not Angular. Edwadia. Yeah. If you really love Edwadia, you can you can use it. Um, I'll judge you, but it but it's fine. Um, and we've also tried to look at some sane extensions to include, as well as uh, we've been we've take we've undertaken the interesting job of integrating the technology used in KDE Connect into the shell, so that it can easily pair your phone to your computer and share notifications and do other things like if you sit down in front of your machine, have it auto unlock, things like. That. So uh, we're we decided once Unity 8 died that we weren't going to wait on anybody to implement the features anymore, and so we've taken a lot of that in-house. Uh, it will be a package and probably an extension as well, the package to handle all of the really complicated you know, stuff, and then the extension to make it so that it, it feels native to the GNOME experience. There's a, there's a KDE Connect app. I think what we're going to do, um, only because KDE has different design language and different, you know, the front end of that will probably be um, different, um, but, the, but the back end stuff will primarily be the same. Uh, there are some things we want to implement, but we're, we're trying to make sure with all these projects that we work with that we're sending that all back upstream. So anything we do on the back end that, that makes for a better experience, we're going to send that back up. The same, that's the same with our theme. Our theme is, um, is uh, a fork of, I'm blanking on the name right now, but uh, we've been, any, any improvements we make, we've been sending them that back upstream as well. And then, uh, the thing we've been doing lately, which people seem to really like, is we've begun building a manufacturing facility in Denver and begun our own in-house designs of boards and chassis um, for both laptops and desktops. And so it, I think next early next year is when we'll release our first completely in-house design and manufactured desktop and then hopefully will follow on with another desktop and then I think a laptop, which would be really exciting because right now, you know, we work with partners in Taiwan and other places. Um, it's great, but you have to make compromises that sometimes we don't want to make. And so um, we decided that the only way to do this correctly is to bring it in-house. And, uh, uh, and I think that that will make us the only computer manufacturer that is manufacturing their computers in the U.S. So that'll be really awesome. Um, fortunately, all of our customers have been fantastic and have grown to a place where we have the resources to do. So I'm really excited about it, and it opens up a lot of it opens up a lot of doors around rethinking things that that the, the computer in front of you know this guy is meant to appeal broadly to everyone and uh, maybe it's conceded but we're not everyone <laughs> we don't have the same preferences as the general public because we're because like I said for most of us this is more than just a tool it's a way of expressing yourself. It's a way of it's part of it becomes part of your identity, and uh, and so uh, I have had at each of these Linux conferences, people sit me down and tell me why the Lenovo I don't know I don't know the model names like X two twenty five keyboard was like the best thing ever. It had seven rows instead of six, and they just like they. You know, they obviously have like very specific desires and needs around their computer and, and, uh, they're still using the damn thing from like 12 years ago. And so, um, 
by being able to completely design and manufacture in house, that allows us to address these things that are really important and not being addressed by, you know, someone like <coughs> Dell, <coughs> who's just trying to sell as many machines to as large an audience as possible and hopefully the same model, you know. So we'll see where it goes. All of this is open, going to be open sourced. So all of our hardware designs, all of our boards. So as we get closer to releasing it, we'll put that out in the open and you'll be able to provide feedback. And also if you have the resources to do so, create the damn thing yourself, you know. Um, so then you guys can be a part of the process. So uh, this is near the end of my talk. Uh, if you undertake any open source project or start a computer company, whatever it is, uh, make sure that you're following your passion because if you're doing what, you're lo what you love, it'll never feel like work. You won't work a day in your life. You've heard this, but uh, that's how I feel every day. That's me in the middle um, uh, using my magical powers to uh, make Emma... I don't really know what's going on there, actually. And uh, and then on the right there, is, that's not me in the tuck suit, but this is my favorite story to tell. Jeremy is our new kernel engineer. Uh, he's not new anymore, but he was then. And we had a party, and uh, he was like, uh, and he he's kind of full of himself, because he is a really, really smart guy. But I thought it was my job to take him down a peg or two. And so uh, he came over and we, I, you know, I was drinking and he said, oh, yeah, you're getting started early. And it was. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning. And <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, like since there's people in the office all day and we're having a party, you know, I'm just taking the edge off. He was like, how many beers are you in? And I'm like, oh, two beers in. And uh, then I saw an opportunity and I was like, I bet you can't keep up. And he's like... <laughs> He's like, yeah, I can keep up. And I was like, all right, cool. I was like, well, here are two beers. And so he downs those two beers. And then he would leave. And then when he came back, I would lie about how many more I'd had. <laughs> and so it was really simple. He didn't verify it in any way, shape, or form, like where are the cans or whatever. So he would come back and he'd be like, and it would only be like 20 minutes. And I would be like, four more in, man. Like, here you go. Like, keep up. And then, like, about three hours later, I was like, you got to get in the tuck suit. And he's like, I don't want to go in the tuck suit. And I was like, everyone does it when they start. <laughs> and I've never been in the tuck suit. And he was like, really, everyone does it? And I'm like, yes, everyone, dude. I don't know why we're arguing about this. And so got in the tuck suit and kind of stumbled his way around the office. That's whenever I was like, dude, I've drank two more beers. And so he had to reach in and, and try to figure that out. <laughs> Needless to say, he hasn't drank, drank with me since. <laughs> because the next day he's like, he's like, ah. He's like, ow. Oh. Like, he's like, how are you doing so well? And I was like, dude, I only had like three beers yesterday. <laughs> and have fun. I, I wish I need to put the original version of this picture. Cass was walking away from a carousel, but he just had his phone in like the perfect position and everything. So I went back and spruced it up a little bit. All right, cool. This is my favorite part. Questions? Ask me anything. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, we'll start here and then work our way back. Yeah, we, we have a stated goal of having an iFixit score of 11 out of 10. And so we've been working really hard to make everything not only modular, but easily accessible. The laptop that, or the desktop that we're working on, which some people have talked about online because we showed people at our super fan event the designs, um, is, is really, really, really easy to take apart and get to all the parts like super easily. It's about the same size as my machine, which I have a mini ITX board in, 
but it is so much easier to it's a full size board and it's so much easier to to uh work on it it's night and day mine when I get in there, I lift the top off and there's like no room to do anything because they're just cables and like <laughs> it running every which direction and so um i'm I really hope we'll be able to get some of the designs up online here soon in a like GitHub repo or something um, so that folks can see what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, the idea is to go um, think about always, if you want to know what direction we're going, think about Apple and then generally go the opposite way. <laughs> um, the only diff, the only thing that we share is that uh, we're both, uh, we're, we've been putting more and more and more time into um, design and uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is our machines are still sexy you can also just replace parts in them and so <laughs> yeah okay uh, beyond the website uh, not a brick and mortar retail presence. We do have deals with more and more companies around reseller programs and things like that. Uh, but no, we, we're not in any stores. That's partially because um, part of our claim to fame is customizing every single component of the machine. And, um, and we've been asked to be in like Fry's and, uh, and Micro Center, but the problem would be that you wouldn't have the ability to say, you know, we'd have to stock like just these different builds and you wouldn't have the ability to say, you know, what exactly goes in there. Yeah. 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 Uh, the the one example of that, which is just because it's easy, is we invite everyone. Uh, we're right off of 16th Street in Denver, you know, so we invite anyone who wants to to come up and just play with the machines. We have a lab set up and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we'd love to do that. Uh, it's going to be a matter of, of, I guess, scale and, you know, how many people would make their way in there. I can see that definitely happening in, in San Francisco, just because we have a lot of customers there. Um, it'd be, yeah, it would be. It's possible. Um, I think that's probably in maybe like. A two to three year like time scale, I would guess. Uh, mostly because uh, we grow about 150 percent year over year, but uh, but I don't know that there's quite the amount of interest there that I that we'd like, you know, and just random people coming in and and playing with the stuff. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what we can we can do. I'll take it back to the head cheese. We'll see what he says. What's that? Yeah, there you go. That would be good. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll send Jeremy out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll bear it in mind. Maybe. At the very least, see if we can't get the Galago into some brick and mortar places. The Galago is kind of a it's kind of a breakaway product because it's thin, light, it's powerful, and so we've debated doing special things for it. But it might end up being one of these one of the next gen ones where everything is you know as close to perfect as possible.
I think uh, it's an open question. I think it's a good question. We we as demand gets higher, we continue to <laughs> scale up, and uh, so far we haven't met the upper limit of that. But you know, I guess I guess uh, the truthful answer is who knows? You know the. Hopefully, as we're getting more money in from projects that force us to scale up, we get to pour that back into scaling up. Uh, right now, we do support, um, you know, some some big names that uh, more and more of their departments are buying our machines, and that is interesting and fun, and that we get to, you know, try and let demand and do it in the best most efficient way possible. Um, would you share with the class who, who you're who you're with? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the the thing I'd say is that the is that when it comes to like support, you know, I don't really I don't really think that's a problem, partially because like, what 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 kind of support can you feasibly expect from like a Lenovo, you know? Yeah, I I think in the I think and I'm speaking off the cuff here. I think when it comes to uh, hundreds of machines, that's easy. Thousands of machines, that's less easy, but still feasible. The, th the other thing that we do is we don't we don't when the so some yeah something that Dell and Lenovo do that we don't is when a new Intel processor drops we don't we don't stock the last gen we just don't do that you know it's it's a personal decision that we made you know it's it, it's <laughs> that sounded weird uh but uh but i mean we might have some leftover ones so that could be a problem with scaling you know because we we try to encourage our customers like just let's just move to the <laughs> most current generation However, I know from my talks with Red Hat that uh, that right now you guys are have a have a more machines and are assessing them, and uh, and we talked about how to get around you know problems with if you have to replace someone's laptop, how do you do that? How many do we need to keep back in order to make sure that's good? So I don't know if you have talked to that team at all or anything, but. <laughs> Well, you did a good job because uh, they, uh, one of your guys reached out to me and said the demand's pretty high, and so we need to figure something out. So. Yeah, yeah, and we're not going to send you a whole bunch of machines with like a, a shitty Wi-Fi chipset that doesn't work. <laughs> Properly, yeah. We for our sound card on the Oryx, uh, we were testing it, and we talked to Realtek, and we were like, "Hey, your driver sucks," and they were like, 
do you want to fix it? And it's like, not really. And they were like, well, here's the code. And it's like, great. <laughs> and then, then we fix it. We send it back. They're like, here's our new Linux driver. It's like, yeah, you're welcome. You know. So, yeah. But, you know, our big thing is that we're dog booting it with you know, Ubuntu, and I know that somebody in the office uses Fedora, so our machines generally, like, some people are like, well, how can you guarantee good Linux support? And it's like, well, we only sell Linux, and if it wasn't good, we wouldn't make any money, and then our company would shut down, and then I would have to, like, move back in with my parents, and my dog would go hungry, and so, the it's a totally different story as you know like with us versus like these other guys yep yeah the so what we've done is uh we have right now it depends on which product we're talking about. The the desktop has a um, I don't remember which motherboard we've been testing in it, but uh, the answer is complicated. We have a we have an for the laptop we have a board that handles all the connections. So we have like this this main motherboard, and then we have another board that handles all the connections to everything that attaches to the laptop. All the firmware on that board is completely open source, but of course, when you're dealing with Intel and some of these other, and some of these standards, they're not they're not open standards, which really sucks. And so uh, the answer is it's a mixed bag. That's why we invite folks like the core boot people over to pick their brain. And uh, we want to move as close to that as possible we even talk other architectures, our things like that. Um, I think we live in a we live in an an interesting time in that you know there are lots and lots of initiatives to open up as much of this as possible. But then again, every time you anytime you port the stuff or you hack it in order to make it open, you you make a trade of something and. So uh, the answer is we're we're trying really really hard to open to liberate as much of the hardware and the firmware that runs on that hardware as possible, um, but we're also being really realistic about how much we can get open and how much we can feasibly do. And uh, to understand that better, you have to sit down in in Carl's mind. Uh, he's been doing this for 11 years and trying to move, you know, closer and closer to his ultimate vision of, you know, a completely open piece of hardware. And uh, he, but it's, for me, that's really hard because I'm impatient. I move around a lot. And I probably have AED. And so the, and, and he has this long, you know, outlook on this is where we're going and we're going to do this, you know, focus on one piece at a time. And so... I think the laptop will move us way closer just because the work is much more focused on that. The desktop is more of a proof of concept. Can we, can we bend metal to make the chassis? You know, can we do all of the, the physical stuff? Um, so the answer is it's definitely at the forefront of our conversations at least once a week. Um, but the, but I don't know what the timeline on it looks like as far as, uh, for instance, in talking with the core boot guys, if you turn off certain parts of the Intel firmware, like force, forcibly turn it off, the computer will, will shut down after 30 minutes with an error message like, turn that crap back on. <laughs> and so, uh, that's the type of thing that makes it difficult to liberate all that <laughs> hardware. But, we're always open to ideas and, uh, you know, we, we have a Reddit thread, or we have a Reddit, uh, subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash system76. 
And that's probably the best place to, if you have personal experience, like working on a specific piece of hardware or, you know, opening or working on opening up the firmware for something to just post your ideas. Um, we're very, very open to what people are doing. We got to talk to uh, the guy who worked over at um, Purism um, on their core boot project. And, uh, and we talked to him at length. And uh, that seemed like a really hard <laughs> job to undertake. But um, he learned a lot of lessons from it. We got to piggyback on those lessons. That's what happens when you buy someone copious amounts of beer. So, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, we talk. We talk at length about. I uh, hope I'm not burning anybody else's time. We talk at length about a this. This idea that we've had of a black laptop, um, and I don't mean that in color. I mean, you know, security-wise, uh, we have a lot of folks who buy our machines who are doing, um, you know, penetration testing and all this other uh, security, the uh, white hat type stuff. And uh, as a result, uh, we think about that a lot. We also talk to a lot of um, I personally talked to a lot of journalists, a guy over at the Intercept and a, and a few other places about what they're concerned about when working abroad and what what tools we could arm them with out of the box in order to make their jobs easier. Um, the answer is all of this stuff plays into what we're talking about. Hopefully, with the firmware that we're shipping, you know, with our with our board and everything on a future laptop. Um, It'll make it. It'll move us that much closer because you'll be able to audit that stuff and make sure there aren't any nasty back doors. Um, like I said, we we've been having a lot of conversations about with with some of the core boot guys about what we can do there. Um, I, honestly, we probably need to formally like draw up the different layers and put that somewhere online and just with an open question of you know what are what's the community out there working on how do we go from you know all these layers being kind of dark black boxes to us to no long that no longer being the case but it is it is a top priority for us yeah i think the biggest my my biggest concern is that is that when we work with anybody, it be it AMD or Intel, you know, there's a there's still quite a bit of blobs in there that we don't really we can't really audit. Um, the the there was an Intel guy at the core boot mixer, which became increasingly difficult for him, I think, as I got more drunk, and and was like, and like one of the guys would say something that they were doing wrong, and I was like, what do you think of that? And He's like, well, I'm not really in charge of that. And I was like, well, tell the guy who is. <laughs> Ryan's coming for him. So I I think, but generally, like, when I do talk to these guys who work at the hardware companies, they are really open to, you, you have to make the argument in the right way, but they're open to, okay, well, you, you have customers who want this. You know, yes. Well, okay. Well, how many customers do you think that is? You know, and it's like, well, here's how much we have right now. You know, but this will allow us to capture more in this sector or that sector. Um, and so, frankly, that's how you have to start to make the argument. But if there's some way we can begin to judge demand around that stuff, um, maybe, like I said, maybe it's through some kind of community portal where people can go and talk about this stuff. Then we can go back and say, you know, hey, there's seemingly this much interest in uh, in this being open. How can we move towards that? And who knows if if we can pay more one day more than the NSA in contracts, then maybe they'll change it. Any other questions?
like I said, I'll be here. I'll be here all weekend. Catch me at the bar. That's pretty much it. Um, my information's down here. Feel free to email me. That's my Twitter handle. And then if you're on Telegram, which is the best way to get me, my handle is the same across every single service. And that's that Twitter handle right there, Ryan Lee Sipes. So if you ping me on Telegram and say, where you at, I will meet up with you and have conversations. And if you buy me a beer, then you've got me for life. So, all right, guys, thanks for coming to the talk. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of the event. Oh, hey, one more thing. Got shirts that I brought, just like this one.